Just take people for granted and we don't know their side, we don't know they're involved in, and we should showcase them. And so I'm delighted that an honorable gardener has agreed to be on the Drexel SEMA show. And with that said, I want to welcome her to the Drexel SEMA show and I'll ask her to, to please introduce herself and tell the viewers a little bit about herself. Thank you, Mr. SEMA. Thanks for inviting me on your show. I deem it a privilege. I think you haven't arrived until you've come on the Drexel Seema show. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, okay, my name is Rita Gardner, and um, I am married to Walter Lake Gardner. We've just celebrated 40 years, and between both of us, we've got six children, and they have been doing very well for themselves. Um, Walter Sean Gardner, a real estate broker. We have Teddy Gardner, um, Lakeisha Gardner, who is government's nutritionist. We have Aisha Gardner, who is vice president of Fortis. Vanessa Penn, who is the one of the persons who send persons abroad oh. for health care at NHIP. And last but by no means least, my baby Latanya Gardner. She is the human resource manager at FSC. Oh, okay. Wow. Very proud. Okay, yes, I'm very proud okay. of all of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. So tell us, let's talk about the sports area. How did you get involved in sports? Well, I don't know how I got involved in sports because sports is something that grew on me oh. um, from a child. I When I learned how to walk, it was on the parade grounds. And the parade grounds was my background. You know, I was fortunate enough to have my own background, my own playground, because we live right over the wall. So you have your own, you had your own I had my own private thing. Drum, my own private thing. And um, from early in the mornings after we were through with our chores, um, Lynn Klaus Thomas, she was my next door neighbor. And um, we would go on the parade, her and her brother Linston and Irvin, and we would play um, all kinds of games that involved running. And um, those days we were running, we, were, we never used to say athletics. We didn't even know what the word athletics meant. We just used to say run and races, you know. Sure. We played rounders and all those old time sports we played. But then we were in, we were in training, but didn't even know we were in training. Mm -hmm. So um, when I got to high school, I was one of the best athletes. And you can see how proud I am. I'm here showing you when I left high school in 75. Yes. I won two gold medals and one silver medal. Yes, we'll let this. Yes, camera. that's my yes. three medals from 75. Wow. Can you believe me? I can't believe you still have can this. Wow, I that's amazing. Those. I shined it up a little bit the other that's day amazing. when they had administrator's house because I was an administrator house. And um, I I always love sports. I love cricket. My grandfather, James Clark, they call him the bull. Hmm. He was an ardent cricketer. Hmm. I could remember every Saturday we would go to the parade grounds and play cricket. Yeah, that was a big I mean, thing back then. That was big here in Grand Trunk those days. I mean, you couldn't find a seat on the wall. You couldn't find a seat. I remember we had the Empire, Mr. Dings Francis. I fancy I seen this little short man now with this big white jacket on. And we had Monica Fulford and persons like Stanley Taylor would be taking the scores. It was really something yeah. big here in Grand yeah, Turks. And that was our was national that was our national sport. Mm -hmm. And um, the school, the high school that I attended, we had a high school team. The um, Grand Turk High right. School team. Mm -hmm. We had the Titans, the Timco Eleven, and um, 
Those days, uh, my grandmother, every Saturday, she would cook a big pot mm. of soup. She then they never had the pots those days. We used the lard canisters, mm -hmm. and she would make those big lard canisters of soup, and um, she did it on the wood stove. Great, great. Yeah, I don't know what it did, but it gave it a special flavor. Ain't nothing like yes. that. Yes, the soup and the sauce. Mm -hmm. She did that every Saturday, and after cricket, those guys would line up and come and get free soup. Nice. But she would charge for the sauce. Okay, that's still good. That's still good. And then, um, and then um, after the high school medals, I, I, I read where you also um, accompanied or you was assistant coach. Yes. To the well, first. and um, I, I, in 76, you had Mr. Obed Gardner. He came oh, yes. here from the Bahamas. That was just after the 76 elections. Mm -hmm. The PDF won that election. Right. And I think um, somehow they got you know, connected and they brought him here to Chucks and Caicos. And um, he pushed to get Chucks and Caicos involved in the um, International Association of Athletics Federation. I want, I really love to be in sports, so I, being the only lady who really was involved in sports at that time, I really didn't have anyone like role models. So um, I said, you know, sports is my thing and I wanted to be involved in it. So. We formed an association. We couldn't call it an, an athletic association until we got the membership oh, from okay. the IAAF. Okay. So we formed a local committee, and in 1977, Leslie Musgrove attended the Congress, the Corrector Congress. I think it was held in Barbados that year in 77. And um, I could remember now Amadeo Francis. He, he always would say, um, I remember you all sent this very huge guy because Leslie was big. Oh, okay. And um, he said, you all send that guy and everybody laughs. Say, where's Tox and Caicos? We don't even know. And when he, uh, he told them how many persons live on that island, he said, but why you want an association? You don't have any athletes. But anyway, after much persuasion, we got our membership to well, the IAAF. That was in 1977. And um, Oban went through other islands looking for best talent. And he brought a number of girls from, girls and boys. We brought Andre Taylor from South Caicos. Mm -hmm. And um, 78, we were ready to go to the first Corifta Games in 78 in Nassau, Bahamas. But prior to going to Bahamas, we went to Gainesville, Florida. I guess to get our feet wet. Right. Where the kids wouldn't get that culture More exposure. Shock. They wanted to get that exposure. So we took part in the main gator relays in Gainesville, Florida. And we won one medal up there. The first person who won a medal was um, Pastor Dale Taylor. He got a silver medal. Okay. Yes. And um, we had uh, Kareen Capron. I think she's Kareen. Karina Capron walking in. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. She won a gold medal. She was the first person in the Chucks and Caicos Islands to win a gold medal in athletics. That's awesome. Yes. And um, I was so proud of her the other day for International Women's Day. I think it was in 2019. Um, Honorable Aswit, Honorable Edwin Aswit, mm -hmm. he was around giving out um, flowers and gifts to some female women who have done outstanding, con made outstanding contributions to the country. Oh, as Minister of Sports. Yes, mm -hmm. as Minister of Sports. And um, he went to her house. And just like me, she showed that medal she won. And I was so proud and elated awesome. that she still kept it. That's just show people who got passion for anything, they will keep those things. And that's about me. I will keep anything because sports is my passion. And then I always say, it is my purpose. Yeah. And, you, and you still are involved in sports. I am you, still you are the executive like that, you know? of the TC3As. In fact, I just came from the Corrupted Games in Nassau, Bahamas. Okay. And um, like I said, we moved one to Nassau for the Corifta Games. So we won one medal by Andre Taylor from South Caicos mm -hmm. and the Javelin. A silver awesome. medal. Awesome. And um, following the Corifta Games, um, all the kids came back with their chaperone, Miss Jordina Taylor, Mistress Jordina Taylor. But myself and Tom Swan, we were the two assistant coaches, along with the main coach was Brooks Johnson from the United States. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bad Gardner did not attend the Corrupt Games in 78. Um, he went on, I think, to Canada, but he did not. 
but we only knew that he was not going when we reached into Gainesville. Mm -hmm. He told us that he would not be accompanying us to the Corinthian Games. Okay. And he hired a coach by the name of Brooks Johnson. And if you look at the picture that I showed, um, Brooks Johnson is still in Walden Sports in Gainesville, Florida. And in fact, during our Corinthian Games in 2007, I got in touch with him and invited him down to come, you know, just as an honorary. That's nice. To come down to the Corifta Games here because I was the president for the 2007 Games. I was nice. the president of that the I, of TC three at the time, and um, he wanted to come, but you know, some things couldn't, yeah. couldn't make Beyond it. Control. But like I said, after the kids came back to Turks and Caicos, I stayed on for ten days to attend the coaches' clinic and. Again, I'm proud to say, I am the first person in the Turks and Caicos to obtain the IAA Level 1 Coaches Certificate in Coaching. What is IAA? IAAF was the International Association of Athletics Federation. Oh, okay. They have since changed a couple of years ago to all athletics. Okay. You know, and one of my, um, you know, I'm always proud of the Turks and Caicos, but I tell you one of my proudest moments was when we held the Rift here in um, 2007, I believe. Yes, it was in and 2007. I, you played, I believe you played a, a role in that. Yes, well, that. yes. well in 2004, we went to the Corifta Games in Bermuda. And Honorable, yeah, the minister that the minister at that time was Honorable Lillian Boyce. Correct. And uh, out of the clear blue sky, when we were getting ready to go to the Congress, she said, Rita, I want you to go into that Congress and you make a presentation that we, Trucks and Caicos, would like to host the games in 2007. Even though we didn't have anything. I said, ready. I said, are you kidding? I said, we don't have any facilities, no infrastructure. We have nothing. What you, she said, just do it. And like, snaggy, um, I said, okay, John Meagle, just do it. <laughs> and you did it. And we, oh my God, we did it. And um, we put together a team that out of this world. And up to this day, whenever we go to the Caribbean, they will always ask, when is Chucks and Caicos going to host another Corifta Games? Because they said that was not a Corifta. That was a mini Olympics. <laughs> that it was, really was nice. really it was, off the chain. It was really yes. nice. Was At so that proud. time, I was the president of the TC3As. I was the president of the Commonwealth Games. And I was the chairman of the Sports Commission. I was wearing three hats at that time. Yeah. That says a lot, you know, we didn't, we didn't have anything in place, so we just took the risk, we won the bit. And, yes, we won. And that's sometimes, we, that's, we, that's a lesson And that. um, when I, after I finished that um, presentation, I was crying. <laughs> I was cry, literally crying. It was about myself and um, Dawn Fulton. Oh, okay. We, mm -hmm. also, we were there you mm -hmm. know, at the presentation. And you had three other countries who were up. It was Barbados, Bahamas, and um, I think um, Trinidad and Tobago. And all three countries said, if you want to read them, if you want um, correct the games in 2007, we will pull our bid. And they did that. Wow. And they said, we will help you. Because I told them, I made sure I said, we don't have the athletes, we don't have the infrastructure, but if you give us uh, opportunity and you help us, I can guarantee you that our athletes will be doing very well after that. Yeah. And as a result of that, we, we have that stadium now. And we I have the stadium. stadium we have the, the, no, it's right? name after anybody. It's oh, it's not named. Oh, okay. Okay. Stadium. okay. It, was really, it was really something else. I mean, putting together all of that infrastructure for um, three years, because the first year, it wasn't much done. We just were training people, training the officials. We had to get sponsors in place. We had to train them. We had to make sure the t-shirts. We had persons like um, the public relations. Um, Cheryl Foreman, mm -hmm. she was in charge of public oh, really? relations. Okay. And I she did an awesome job. We had one set of t-shirts. The minister said, I don't like these shirts. We're going to get another. We have to get us up because they wanted everything. Yeah meticulously right. done. And we didn't because even have any land at that time, right? We didn't have no land at the time. And that was the problem. Because um, the person who was going to give us the land, I think we were set up. <laughs> and it was to the end, they said, no, we're not going to give you this land. And we were forced. 
we were forced to go where we are yeah. now. And it was just a year. We had one year to do all of that. I remember going up and down to Provo just about every day mm -hmm. for months just to get that thing. We had to work with the Attorney General's office. It was so much red tape. Yeah. And I, I was scared. But, but you got it done. We got yeah, it done. Yeah, we got it done. We got it done. Yeah. And I am proud today to say my fingers were on that straight through. Yeah. Every step of the way with that corrupted track. Yeah. With the track, with everything. Events and everything. Everything. Well done. Well, that was a great moment from all of us. It yeah. was a great moment I don't know for all terms and Vegas Islanders, but we were proud of ourselves. Did we win medals at that game? We didn't win any medals, but I was still proud of that. We got me we were presented one medal with one of the athletes from 2004 because oh, okay. there was Omar Hobby. Okay. Speaking of medals, I, I read somewhere, uh, I saw um, something in the media where you were recently awarded uh, a medal. Um, I think someone came from the Caribbean yes. to personally deliver this to you. Tell, tell us about that. Well, um, it stemmed back in 1998, whilst I was in. Um, Melbourne, Australia, mm -hmm. um, we, the Caribbean guys, we form a committee whilst in, in um, Melbourne, Australia, and um, they decided to call the association the Caribbean Association of National Olympic Committees, where they wanted all just the Caribbean to try and, you know, push and advance their agenda as far as the Olympics were concerned. And that's what really propelled me to start the work mm -hmm. um, to get Tux and Caicos into the Olympic Association. And um, I've been working, trying to get trucks and kickers in the Olympics now from, I mean, way back even before know. that, I, I mean. Know. But um, 1996, I'm talking a little bit about that, 1996, the Olympic um, Federation, they made a ruling that they wouldn't take any more small countries. And that's how trucks and kickers, would, they were left out. Mm -hmm. But um, people would say, but you got Bermuda and the BVI and all of those countries, but they were in. They were already in before they made but the decision. I can tell you, trucks and kickers could have been in the Olympics. And um, I think it was 95 because I was in the House of Assembly at the time. Um, this guy, Bobby Nunes, came to trucks and kickers and um, asked the powers to be to try and get trucks and cakes into the Olympics Association and he would have a sister. Sure. He was from Cayman, but his mother was from North Caicos. Okay. And he said, I want to help trucks and cakes to get into the Olympics. And um, persons at the time said, we aren't ready. Yeah, see the and now it's hurting us now, yeah. you see. And going back to your question, um, we formed that association in Malaysia when we went to the games in Malaysia. 1998, um, we talk, had more talks about it. In 1999, in Barbados, that was when the cannot was established. And um, I was one of the founding members. And last year, the president of the Commonwealth Games, him and the Secretary General, Ms. Um, Rosalie Ingram, and um, President Godfrey Bain, they went to um, Trinidad for the General Assembly. Mm -hmm. um, they invited me to come, but um, I wasn't able to attend. So they called me whilst they were there saying that Jackson Kekis, you know, name was called, and the person of Rita Gardner, and uh, no one was there. So Mr. Bean accepted this on my behalf. But the president, Brian Lewis, he said for all the work that I did, he wanted to present Person. This to me in person, and it reads, Kenneth acknowledges Rita Gardner for the pioneering contributions you have made to the realization as the leader of the Caribbean Olympic Movement 2022. And Congratulations. I think this is Congratulations. Really, yes. you, you deserve it. Congratulations. Yes. Now let's look into um, gender fits. Um, I believe that started... In 19, well, 1999, that's when the uh, women's desk mm -hmm. was established. Tell us, and you were the first I was the first um, coordinator of the women's desk. Tell us about that. How did you get involved in that? Well, it really wasn't getting a wall. Um, they um, advertised the job. And um, I wasn't working at the time. I really was in the private sector all my life. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I didn't have a job. Um, so I said, let me try out for this job. I don't know exactly what it's about, but reading up a little about it and talking about domestic violence and 
um, child abuse and all of this. Um, I said, let me try and put a job. And I went to the, the interview and um, they asked me, um, do you have any questions? I said, yeah, just one. I said, they said, what? I said, when am I going to start? Yeah, I like that. I like that. And um, the rest was history. So, um, yeah. Okay, and tell us about the trip to China. I, I well, the trip to China, that was um, in 19, I think 1995, in 1995. Oh, it was prior to you getting That was prior to me mm -hmm. getting there. That was with the Women in Development. Mm -hmm. That was Women in Development. They were the ones who advocated because you had um, Mr. Cheryl To and Mahalo Vince. They went to China, to Beijing, China. That was the biggest world, con world conference on women. And um, women throughout the world, they knew that their issues were not addressed. So um, the General Assembly, they decided to bring all women together and um, have this legal um, meeting conference. for women, the legal conference, yes, the biggest conference of women. And um, we, they hired, the government hired a lady from, the, from Barbados, I think it was, yes, from Barbados, and she went around the islands and found out what women wanted, what women in the Chucks and Caicos wanted, what were their issues. And they put together a paper, they did a consultation, put together a paper, and um, that's how Cheryl and Mahela do to go to okay. the conference. And coming back, they had 12 critical areas. Um, you know, you had uh, women in politics, women in health, education, and these are the areas that women need to be empowered in. And um, I didn't know much about this thing, but I said I know I got common sense, and I think I know I I want to job. really want to help women because I was doing it anyway, helping women in different areas. And um, we had a persons like Cheryl Tull. She was a, a min not a minister, but I think she was Wait, a representative, oh, okay. a representative in the area that time in the House of Assembly, and she advocated for the women's desk because there was no machinery. There was no machinery where women could come and you know speak about their issues. So um, in 1999, it was February. I was supposed to start in January, but I went to the same meeting that we mm -hmm. talked about. I said, I'm going to go to my sports meeting yes, first. Yes. So um, February the 1st, I started. Okay. And um, yes, so we launched the women's desk in March during International Women's Day. Okay. International Women's Day, 8th of March, I can remember now. We launched the Women's Desk. And um, like three years later, we I changed it. I said, I don't want to be in a desk because it really was literally just a desk. Mm, okay. I said, I need my own office. We need to strengthen this institution. I need an office with a big sign that says gender or women's desk where you could find women can come and articulate their issues. So um, I advocated for some more staff. I got one more person to work with me on Provo because Provo had most of the issues. And um, I can remember now one, one of the areas that is really near and dear to my heart is the continuous education for teenage mothers. And oh, yeah, when they get pregnant in yes, high school. Yes, that was one of my most famous projects getting girls to return to school. I got a lot of pushback on that issue. But they didn't return to public school? They didn't return to public school, Ms. Allen. Ms. Oh, okay. Allen let us use the, um, the business college. Got it. And um, we had girls, I went to North Caicos, I went to other islands, trying to find girls who were out of school and just doing nothing. So we brought them to Grand Turk, we let them live in Ms. Allen's house and the school. We had a house nanny there with them. And um, the first girl who graduated as the valedictorian, Siobhan Rigby, she is now a, a mental health specialist, oh, wow. got her master's degree. That's and incredible. I always say, you know, with all that pushback, you got gir girls now who are serving as police officers, mm -hmm. firefighters, teachers, nurses, you know, and I plan to do later on where are they now mm. you know interesting and um it was awesome. later on we just moved to not only girls but we brought in boys mm. to do 
um, technical work, tiling, um, masonry, carpentry, electric, electric work, and all of that stuff that we did. So, but now girls can go back into school even while they are pregnant. Oh, okay. You know, because putting them in a different school, that was discriminating against them. That was discrimination in itself. Because, you know, you're trying to isolate them themselves. So I advocated for all of that. Besides, there was a lot of legislation that I worked with. I joined with the OACS, Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the domestic, on the domestic violence reform. And we had um, persons like the Attorney General now, she wasn't the Attorney General at the time, but she did a lot of work to assist me. Um, we had the magistrate, Mr. Williams, he did a lot of work with us. You had, you know, see, I formed a lot of NGOs, the Domestic Violence Foundation, the Women in Development, and they were the, even um, our first lady, she was the president of Women in Development at the time, yeah. and she really pushed for some of these issues to be addressed. Okay. So, um, yeah, I was the first director of the Gender Affairs, yes, yes, and I stayed there for 10 years, mm -hmm. and not a day went by that I didn't work for something different to empower and advance women in this country. And do you think that um, there was gender inequality issues in the yes. Caicos? Yes, of really? course, in those days. Because at, the, at that time, the, the women's movement was just getting into place. Okay. It was during the women's movement, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, we have come a very long way, but there's still some stuff that you need to attack, attach to, you know, yeah. gender inequality. So tell us about your community involvement. I know you and your husband, um, you guys are responsible for the, the festivals. What is it called? T.I. Um, Summer Jam, yeah. yeah. Tell us about that. Well, in 19, well, yeah, 1995, we started um, the T.I. Summer Jam, and one segment of it was um, uh, a pageant, pageant, where we gave girls a platform to display their beauty, their poise, their talent. Um, you know, their educational skills and all of that. And I'm very proud of it to say that it's still on. And there's also a little bit of advertisement now I'm going to push it. It will be held on the 27th of July to the 29th. Awesome, awesome. This year. Awesome. So um, we stopped during COVID time um, from 2015, yeah, during the pandemic. And even before that, we had stopped a bit because we didn't have a venue. Oh, okay. And I just love to say that we have had so many girls that we sent on to Miss Chucks and Cakes and by extension, Miss Universe. And I love to say Miss Chucks and Cakes 2015, Shanice Williams, mm -hmm. she was discovered by me. Okay. Yes, and I, I discovered her in Anglican Church. <laughs> okay, in the church. <laughs> in the church. She had what it takes to be a queen. And I knew it, and I, I asked yeah, her for like her. three years before mm -hmm. she said yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, she went on to the Miss Chucks and Caicos mm -hmm. and to Miss Universe, and she did Chucks and Caicos Prop. Awesome. Well, I think we've come to the end of our show, and I just want to um, thank you for this opportunity, and I want to congratulate you on the work that you have done and continue to do. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have any closing remarks that you'd like to share, but I just want to. Thank you so much. We need more people like you within this community. Well, I I would just like to say and um, invite some of my friends and my family out on Saturday the 20th, where I would be honored as the um, the Trucks and Caicos getting the Trucks and Caicos National Award. Oh, congratulations! Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. congratulations. And I think I'm gonna be the only person um, in the category year who will be getting that in this category. Yeah. Congrats, well done. And, and, and you told me you're only born, and you tell me, young lady, no, young lady, young lady. Well, anyway, with that said, I want to thank you for, for watching the Drax Wasima show. you just seen an interview here with um, the Honorable Rita Gardner, a woman of wearing many hats and made a significant contribution to the Drax and Caicos, and her story deserves to be told, and that's why she's here on um, the Drax Wasima show. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Commonwealth Games Association, Chucks and Caicos Islands, lifetime membership of the TCICDA, presented to Rita Gardner in appreciation of your outstanding contribution 
to, of excellence to the Commonwealth Games, December the 9th, 2020. Yes. Okay, this one for outstanding participation and dedication in track and field from Trucks and Cakes Amateur Athletic Association, 2001. And um, this one was from Abundant Life. This one in honor of International Women's Day. The Gender Fish Unit Awards Regarding for outstanding contribution in sports within the Jocks and Caicos Islands, March 2007. And then I got this one in 2004 for the National Draw Unit. Honor Shreda Gardner for exceptional dedication and commitment to drug, drug prevention. June 2004, 1998, in recognition of your contribution to athletics in 1988 from the TC3As. And um, this award was presented um, World Anti Doping Athlete, um, World Anti Doping Agencies. And um, this was presented in 2015 by the president of Waddle for getting Chucks and Cakes into the regional anti-doping organization. At that time in Jamaica in 2005, 13 countries became members of the regional anti-doping organization and Chucks and Cakes became one under my presidency. I was down in Jamaica at the time. And um, this is the most and Rita Gardner, TCI Sports Hall of Fame, adopted 24th of October 2015, Trucks and Cakes Island Excellence in Sports Awards. This is my Hall of Fame award, right? And we have a lot back here with for gender. And this one. This one is in recognition of appreciation for the valuable and distinguished service to the parliamentary process in the Turks and Caicos Islands. This is awarded to Mr. Rita Jean Gardner, parliamentarian, 1991 to 1995. And this was done in October 24, 2007.